Hi, welcome to today's video. My name is Paul. So this painting is going to be a very loose, sketchy painting. It was quite a quick painting, about I don't know, 10, 12 minutes. So it's quite sketchy, very loose. But this video today is more of a a story time video, if you like. But it has relevance to to art and painting in general. I should say at the start, I'm not really into sport. Um, I just don't find it that interesting. I'm interested in the stories, the individual stories, you know, all of the work and everything, all of the difficulties people have to go through to achieve their goals. That's fascinating. But actually sport itself, people kicking balls or hitting a ball with a stick or whatever, it doesn't interest me that much. Uh, it's just me. Um, no offense to anybody that's into sport. But this sport, I don't know, some people maybe even don't call it a sport, I don't know, but it's Japanese sumo wrestling. And it's just, I read a couple of stories recently that I thought were interesting, not because they're about sumo, like I say, I'm not interested in those sort of things, but it's a story, two stories about giving up or not giving up. So the first story was a young Japanese man, 17 years old, he left home and he went to a sumo heia, a sumo stable. It's a place where sumo wrestlers live and practice. And he said to the boss of the, the heia, I want to become a sumo wrestler. He was promptly sent back home again because he was only 17 he was only a minor and he didn't have his parents permission to do this so they said you know go back get your parents permission and then you can come back and we can talk about this so he did he went and got his parents permission and at the age of 17 he became a professional sumo wrestler he got accepted into one of these heia as far as i know with sumo you have to be a member of one of the heias I don't know how many heas there are, but you have to be a member of one of these in order to be a professional sumo wrestler. So anyway, he got accepted and he was a professional sumo wrestler up until this month. Um, he turned 23 and he quit. He gave up on his dream. Now, sometimes um, with athletes and wrestlers and things they might quit because of an injury um an injury that forces them to quit that wasn't the case in this um with this young man he just quit he had lost 100 consecutive fights or bouts or whatever they're called and he decided that he wasn't good enough to be a sumo wrestler so he just quit he went to his coach and he said um i quit and the coach accepted this. So then there's a, a second sumo wrestler. Now this guy was, he's not Japanese, he's from Mongolia, but I think he came to live in Japan while he was a teenager. Again, specifically to become a sumo wrestler. And I think he went to high school and this high school was also well known as a, in the sumo world as well. So I think he went to high school in Japan and also practiced sumo. And he was successful. He got up to the second highest rank. As far as I understand it in sumo, there are six tournaments per year, six official tournaments. And depending on your performance in each of those tournaments, you either go up or down the rankings. And there are hundreds of rankings from the very top right down to the amateur levels. So anyway, this guy, this Mongolian guy, got all the way to the second highest ranking, which put him in the top 1% or 0.5% of sumo wrestlers. But then he got injured. Uh, he got injured quite badly. His knee was damaged and he had to have surgery. And then after the surgery, he had a long period of convalescence and recuperating and letting his knee heal again. During that time, he couldn't take part in the tournament, so he started dropping down all the rankings. 
the way the sumo works is if you don't take part, they consider it as zero wins and therefore you drop down. And he dropped down hundreds of rankings right down into the near the bottom sort of amateur levels. Again, he went to his coach and he said, look, I'm never going to get back up to the top again. I want to quit. But this coach was different. This coach said, no, you're not going to quit. I'm not going to accept um, you quitting. You're going to keep going. So he did. He got back into the wrestling. His knee got better or part better anyway. And this time he made it not just the second highest, but this month he got promoted up to the top rank. Um, it's called Yokozuna. And the thing is, in the, I don't know, thousand year history of sumo or whatever, there's only been about 72 or 73 guys have ever made it to this top rank. It's very difficult to get there. So he's no longer in the top 1% of sumo. He's now in the top, I know, 0.01%. Um, all because his coach didn't let him quit. And I just thought those two stories were interesting how one human being can have such an effect on another human being's life. In the case of the two coaches, one of them accepting him quitting, therefore we don't know if the young Japanese guy would ever have been successful because he quit and the coach accepted that. And the other case, the Mongolian guy whose coach said, no, you're not going to quit, you're going to keep going. And of course, in, the ten in terms of art, same thing. Um, I don't know about you, but I certainly have feelings of I'm no good at this. I can't do this. I want to quit. But just refusing, sort of like the coach, if you like. Being my own coach, I'm just saying, no, you're not going to quit. You're just going to keep going. So the two stories were just, I thought, interesting. Um, hopefully not corny or anything else, but interesting. And same thing, if you're struggling with art, you know, don't give up. Just keep going because you never know. Um, if you quit, you do know the answer. That's it. That's the end. So just keep going. Keep trying. Okay, well, if you made it through this story about some more wrestlers, um, thank you for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.